Hello and welcome to another video where we'll be finding out if enough anti-aliasing can make up for such a low resolution. We're going to be testing a range of games here today, such as Grand Theft Auto V and the likes, which of course pack a lot of detail into distant areas and make it ideal to test whether anti-aliasing can make up for this low resolution where they shouldn't actually be visible. So why not see if enough special effects can make the games look good enough to be playable? I mean, let's say you're stuck on an old monitor but lack the money to upgrade, or that you feel your primitive resolution is still good enough in 2017. Up first, you have Grand Theft Auto V, which is running at 640x480, with no anti-aliasing of any sort. As you can see, the game suffers heavily from a lot of jagged edges, and although the frame rates remain blisteringly high, the game wasn't all too playable because of the lack of detail in distant areas. Upon setting the anti-aliasing up to 8 times, we can see the game generally looked much nicer. Although the details were still highly lacking, the jagged edges were mostly gone, and replaced what seemed to be this light haze that remained in the distance, probably to cover up the severe lack in resolution we had here. Although the game did look much nicer with this anti-aliasing, we saw a massive performance hit down to around 45 FPS averages, a massive decrease from our previous FPS which was hovering around the 80 FPS mark. So we had more than half our FPS, which in a game like GTA V, it can be more than worth it for the increase the actual anti-aliasing had on how the game looked, but in competitive games, this wouldn't be welcomed. Even driving through areas or engaging in gunfights, I found the game to be much more than playable with the anti-aliasing, as distant enemies became more like blobs of bad guys rather than a few pixels you'll struggle to hit. Of course, it won't be as accurate as a higher resolution, but I saw gunfights against random blobs worked much nicer than against a few pixels in the distance. Of course, this was just my experience, but some may find the higher FPS to be worth more than the increased visual distance that anti-aliasing provides. Up next is CSGO, where many Many gamers believe that playing in 640x480 gives you the best experience possible. And well, as we can see without anti-aliasing, our frame was once again blisteringly fast, but lacked the quality that's associated with higher resolutions. Enemies were visible, and I suppose you could get away with doing moderately well without anti-aliasing, but the lack of detail and distance really proved to be my downfall, as enemies just lost their clarity. When we added anti-aliasing, which we were running at 8 times, the few pixels that were previously enemies began to look much more like enemies, rather than just blurs travelling across the background. The FPS in CSGO felt almost unaltered, which just goes to show how well MSAA can be optimised in a game like CSGO. The game felt much more playable, and I was able to perform much better with the increased detail and distance. In a game such as CSGO, when running at these low resolutions, which I class as anything below 720p, MSAA seems to be a necessary factor, and not just an effect to be ignored. In the case of CSGO, you could get away with quite the nice experience with anti-aliasing, which can rival the quality of a higher resolution, without needing the purchase of a new monitor. Of course, I still prefer the native resolution I play at of 1680x1050 when it comes down to actually playing the game. Finally, we have Bethesda's Fallout 4, which features a lot of vast open spaces. And as you can see, this turns into a jagged mess in the background. The game wasn't unplayable at this resolution, but the landscapes look messy, and the lack of detail in the background made things look very messy, where they needn't look that bad at all. When we added anti alias into the game, it did look much nicer. The background that previously looked like a jagged mess is now blurred into something that retains some of the detail that we can see at higher resolutions. The main issue with anti-aliasing here is that TXAA is the only option available, and is a very demanding form of anti-aliasing which I found to crush my FPS to around the 30 FPS mark, with even dips down to the low 20s, even with such a low resolution having the game natively run at. In the case of gameplay, it was much better with anti-aliasing, but the performance hit just wasn't worth it, as I found the game's sporadic FPS to just be unenjoyable. You'd either have to limit your FPS, or just inject your own form of anti-aliasing, just to remove the amount of strain that TXAA puts on the system. So in conclusion, can anti-aliasing save your gameplay experience and your monitor? Well, kinda. I mean, it varies per game and how well it's implemented. MSAA is a feature that's always welcome, but even I hate its performance hit in certain games, especially Fallout 4 and Grand Theft Auto V. Admittedly, we were running with ludicrous amounts of anti-aliasing, and for the most part, we would have been fine to turn these down, as a step up from four times to eight times is only a small one, but it's all too much apparent at these low resolutions where we're using it. In short, no, anti-aliasing can't remedy your need for a new monitor, especially if you're a sub-720p resolution. And really, now with 1080p monitors being around the £50 slash US dollar mark, it's the perfect time to upgrade, as not only will the quality be much better, the performance will likely be better too. To give you an example, I can run GTA 5 at 60fps at 1440p, better than I can run 8 times anti-aliasized, 640x480. Of course, so you're really just spoiling your computer by bottlenecking it with your monitor. Thank you very much for watching, good night! And if you enjoyed this, why not like and subscribe for more?